In this video, you'll learn to open and close files following best practices, read and write to files, copy files, rename files, delete files, and also jump to a specific position within a file to make a write. Let's get right to it. So first things first, I have a test folder I've set up where I have a picture, I have a text file, and I have my program. How do we open a file? Well, it's very simple. We can just do a variable, in this case, test file, equals open, and we're going to put testfile.txt, and we're going to open it for reading, and the way we do that is with the second parameter, r indicates reading. Whenever we open a file, we have to close it. If we fail to do this, it can cause all kinds of leaks, and your machine will lose resources. So make sure whenever you open a file that you close it. This isn't the best way to open a file. There's a way in Python of doing it sort of following best standards, and I'll show you that in a moment. But first, let us read from this file. And the way we do that is testfile.read. And actually, I can just put that straight in a print. And if we run that, you'll see the contents of my file. So it's a very simple text file with four lines in it. Now, there's an issue with just doing read on a file. If the file is particularly large, you could actually run out of memory before you can read it because it reads the whole file into memory. One way of mitigating that is to do read line. So we can do read line, and this will read each line of the file. So if we copy this down, you'll get the first two lines of the file. Now, note here that we're getting extra carriage returns because there's a new line in the file and then print is generating one. You can actually switch that off by using the end parameter, and we're just going to set that to a zero length string, and then it will go to normal. If we want to read a file line by line, we can use a for loop. So for line in test file, we can then print the line. And it doesn't have to be line. Line is just the variable name we're using. And you'll see it prints the whole file. Just something about closed. To test if a file is open or closed, you can do testfile.close. So if we do print, test file dot closed and then after the close we do that again you'll see it reads the file and then it says false so the file is not closed and then the file is closed after the close the problem with using close is that if an error occurs between your file open and your file close the file will not close so to get around this problem python has a, something called a context manager and the way a context manager works is it uses the with keyword and then we do with our open file as and then the variable name this is going to be test file and this creates a block of code so if we now bump this up and get rid of the close everything that runs within this block will be within the file context the moment we exit this block the context manager will automatically close the file if we run this again you'll get the same response we did before file is open because it's within the context and then file is closed because we left the context any error that occurs within here will also close the file. Okay, so that's how to read a file. What if we want to write to a file? And to show you how to do that, we're just gonna take this, we're gonna open a new file, let's call it test file two, and we're gonna use the W keyword for write. And then we can do test file.write, hello. And you'll notice in the file menu, we don't have a file called test file two. And when you use write, it will automatically create one for you if it doesn't exist. So we now have test file two and it's got hello in it. One thing to note with this is if we take that out and just put a pass in here, when we run it again, it will actually recreate the file. So it will be empty. It will not keep what it had in before. So that's one of the limitations with write. Whenever you write a file, it should be a new one or you're going to overwrite it. So what if you want to copy the contents of a file to another? All we need to do is create another context manager. And this one is going to be test file copy.txt. We're going to set this to read and we're going to set this to write. And this one should be called write file. Do be very careful here. You need to make sure that you've created a different file name to here. If you don't, the W will overwrite the file. You'll lose your test file and the program just won't work. So now that we've done that, we can read from the file. And I showed you the read line thing. But if your file doesn't have lines or you want to read smaller lines because they're massive lines, then you can use something else. And the way we do that is if we do test file dot read, and let's create another variable here called chunk size. Let's set that equal to 10. For example, when you're doing this in the wild, you would use a much bigger number and we can do test file dot read chunk size. And in the case of a text file, that will read 10 characters. 
When you use a read with a certain size, when you reach the end of a file, you'll get a zero length string. And we can use that to our advantage in a while loop. So actually, let's put this in a variable. Let's say file content equals. And then we're going to do while length of file content is greater than zero loop. And then in here, we can do write file dot write file content. If we were to run this as is, we'd have a problem. And that is that we'd have an infinite loop because we're not actually reading any more of the file here. So we're actually going to copy file this line here down to here. And what this will do is it will read the first set of content. Providing the file isn't empty, it will write it to a new file. And then it will read more of the file and go around the loop until we run out of file. So if we run this now, we should get a new file created called test file copy. And we did. And there you can see it's a copy of our original test file. Now, what if you wanted to add more stuff to a file instead of just overwriting it? Well, Python has you covered because there is an A keyword here for append. And if we run this again now and then open our test file copy, you'll see that it's actually tagged the file onto itself again. So append works really well there. We've been spoiled over the years with text editors where we can just go in and type something in the middle of a file. This doesn't work in files that you work with in Python or even C. When you write to a file in those languages, it will overwrite the file that you're writing. So if we take our example here, and I'm going to set this file to read and write, and I do that by using R+. We're going to take this out, and I am just going to write at the beginning of the file a new line called hello. We'll put a line feed at the end. Wrap it in quotes. And then if we run this, actually, I don't need my test file anymore. So I'm going to comment this line out. And then we'll bump this back with shift tab and run it. And if we go into test file copy now, we have hello and then a new line. And then you'll see a test text file with a space. So what's actually happened here if we open our original test file is it's replaced this because H E L L O exclamation mark new line replaces those characters. So if we want to put something after the first line, for instance, but we want to preserve the rest of the file, how would we do that? And the way we have to do that is to use a temp file. And you'll notice this if you use a word processor, if you've got file extensions switched off, sometimes you'll see a hidden file, which is a temporary version of the main one. And that's because those programs have the same limitation. So I'm going to put this back to what it was. Let's say for our test file, we want to write a new line straight after the first one that just says hello. How are we going to do that? First, we need to know the number of characters. And if we look in the gutter and you'll see we're at character 25 there. So let us read the first five lines of the original file. So let's put this back in and then we're going to do test file dot read 25. And actually, we can wrap that in a write file dot write. Then we're going to write how hello and then we're going to write the rest of the file. And because it's a small file, I know it's safe to do this. And if we run this, hopefully it will work. It didn't. And that's because it's R plus. We want to open it for write. And now we have our test file copy. And you'll see hello is now on the second line. But we don't really want that to be the file that we created. So actually, I'm going to change this to temp file and then change this variable. Right click refactor, rename temp file. And then we're going to want to delete the original file and copy this over. So how do we do that? For that, we need to use the OS. And to access the operating system, we can import OS. And then once we've left the context manager, because if you do this within a context manager, the file will still be open and it will fail. If we were to rename test file over test file, that's not actually going to work because the file system will say there's already a file there. So to get around that, we do os.remove testfile.txt. And then we're going to do os.rename tempfile.txt. And our second parameter will be testfile.txt. And hopefully, if I haven't screwed this up, we'll get a copy. And you'll see it's rewritten the original file now. And the temp file got created for a split second and then vanished. And we can run this multiple times. So I've just run it again. And now we've got two hellos. So that's how you edit a file. Now, if we want to work with image files, things are a little bit different. And that's because image files aren't text, they're binary. And so if we recreate our file example, which by the magic of video editing, I'll do like this. Okay, so what have I done? 
I've recreated our read chunks right to another chunk. I've changed my test file to sadcat.jpg and my temp file to sadcatcopy.jpg. And I've increased the chunk size to 1024. It just seemed like a nice round number from a binary perspective. And we are going to copy this rather dashing picture of a sad kitten. The reason I chose a kitten is everyone knows that people just can't get enough of kittens on the internet. So hopefully this is going to boost this video. Okay, so if you run this, it's going to fail. And there we go. Unicode decode error, charm app. Codec can't decode byte blah. And that's because it just can't read the file in character mode. So how do we deal with that? It's really, really simple. All we need to do is tell it we're reading from a binary file and writing to a binary file. And to do that, we just add B to the end of R and W. Run this again, files completed. We now have sadcatcopy.jpg. And you can see we now have two kittens. Twice as much reason to watch this video. Something else you need to know, and that is how to jump to a particular position in a file. So let us go back to our test file. And I only want to read the second line of test file, which is hello. So how can I do that? We could read bits of data up to that line, or we can just jump straight to it. And the way we jump straight to it is test file dot C and the location, which I think the end of the last line was 25. So this would be 26. And then we are going to print test file dot read line. And there we go. We just get hello. When you're moving the cursor around a file to read specific bits really quickly, you also sometimes need to know where you actually are in the file. And the way you do that is using the tell keyword. If we do test file dot tell and print that and then copy it after the seek and then copy it after the read line and run it, you'll see that at the beginning of the file, we're at file position zero. Then just after the seek, we're exactly at 26. And then after it's read hello, we're at 33. So using the seek and tell keywords, you can jump around a file very efficiently without having to read lots of data you don't care about. Hopefully this video has given you a great foundation to start reading and writing files yourself. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to reorganize your code so that you can reuse it, which is something as a developer you absolutely must know. That video should be top left right now. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.